So what advice would you give in terms of organizing college work and resources? Okay. So I guess this kind of lends itself a little bit to some of the things that you were saying earlier, Kira. But yeah. in terms of kind of resources or how I have done it is um, usually, you know, kind of that, you know, the kind of the big rabbit hole moment. So when you've got all of the reading going on, what I tend, what I have done is I've read it. And usually for the most part, I can establish some kind of idea or theme or something comes up in my head that I'm thinking, oh yeah, so this is about, so let's say this is about children's participation rights and this is about something else. So I usually kind of mark that as, you know, and I, I create a folder. So I create folders um, with, you know, kind of the themes, you know, again, I'm kind of being specific because my head is so research orientated, but I, I have, I put my resources, I file them uh, under particular ideas. So under particular topics or how they're being discussed, that's how I file them. I know that you put, you have the, the date and the, the name. So I usually have the name, but what I also have had to do is I've had to put in red because there is a chance mm -hmm. that yeah. uh, oh I did read this before yeah. so and also it looks really good when you open the folder and you see all these red 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 so you know that's yeah. kind of a nice pat on the back so I organize my resources for the most part I don't print them out anymore I did at the beginning I had them printed out and I had a whole notebook system you know with, with but it was the same concept of organizing stuff under themes in a way that I could retrieve them. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a really good way. You've actually added something else now for me to add to my little system, which is great. I have occasionally put things in by themes as well, but um, and, and that's actually great the way you put in your read. I, I like that now, that's something. See, there's learning in everything and learning never stops regardless of what stage you're at. Um, uh, I suppose I'm going to be repeating myself. I do tend to put the uh, year and author name on the papers and a bit of the title. I like the idea Marin has about putting read on when you have read it or even putting a bit of the theme on it. Um, the folders is a huge thing and that is just so easy to do online. Like it's, it's yeah. incredibly easy to organise yours. It, it's just a matter of when you're doing it don't leave it till the last minute to organize them. Organize, I organize as I download, you know, so if I download and read, then I do my next step, year, author, name a journal, and then allocate it to the folder that I want it in. So you're not going searching for stuff. I know it's very easy when we download and just save to a folder on its own that they come through with maybe partial names on them or they'll have DOI numbers on them and then you don't know what you're looking for at all. So with regards to resources, not being able to find things can be really unhelpful yeah. as part of assignments. Um, uh, oh, let me think. Um, Just in relation that would be the best step. Pardon? Sorry, I was just going to say, I was just thinking just in relation to when you when you organize your folders into themes, you know, yeah. like also just to say that at the beginning, you know, when you're at the very beginning and you don't maybe necessarily even know what the theme might be. Yes. Well, the thing about that is you can make up the themes as in yeah. what you read from the paper and what you get from the paper. That's your theme. It's your theme. And it can be easily the case that um, at the very beginning, you might have 50 themes, right? So every paper might have its own idea. But the yeah. thing is that as you keep reading, your, your folders start merging. So yes. like your, it's, it's an ongoing process. So at the beginning, you read a paper. OK, that was on this. OK, that was on that. So you have a load of folders. Yeah. But as you keep going, um, you can start merging it. So it's like very... 
very impressive system you can have by the end of it all. Mm -hmm. you can, and, you know, it's useful too to have that system in relation to specific assignments. Mm -hmm. Always keep the, I always keep my drafts in the one mm -hmm. folder related to a specific yeah. assignment. And I had a very bad experience in the course of one of my undergraduate assignments. Somebody came to the house just as I was about to, uh, sub in the final stages of getting ready to submit something. And this girl said to me, oh, don't work too late tonight. And I thought, oh, no, I'm just ready to submit. And I went back in and I discovered that I had managed to save my document. I had cut half the document away and saved it that I had lost half the work and not realized I had lost it all. And then I ended up working all night. So what I do now Every day I start, if I get my, start my drafting to organize my team the assignments, I start my writing early and every day I work on that, that, that assignment and I do it with the year, the month, the day. So it'll always have, it'll be in order. So you'll have the most recent document at the very bottom. So every day I put a new date on it for today's date. So it means that if my computer crashes, which can happen and it leaves you in a, a complete emotional mess, or if you make a mistake, you always have the last day's information on the previous document and you can take stuff out and you could be in the middle of editing and think, right, uh, no, I took that bit out, but I know I have it in a previous draft and you can bring it back in. So it can be really useful to do that. And I think that's an important way to organize, especially assignments so that you always have the most recent document. And then by doing them with the year, month, date thing, you can be certain that you're putting in the final version of your document. Uh -huh. Well, just I suppose to add from that, from the t technological point of view, that I would be a great advocate for if you use OneDrive or Google Drive, that will auto save. So you'll always have it, but you can revert to previous versions as well. And we have in uh, one of the videos that we have, um, I think in this in this module, but also in the digital skills, um, it, it, it gives the instructions on how to do that. So it's not that you'll it's after you close a document. Um, that version saves and you can go back to any previous version that you from any previous uh, thing. And um, yeah, again, with uh, my tendency to lose things and break things, I <laughs> the online, the cloud, the cloud is the way to go. I wouldn't be without it because. So for techno technologically minded people, students, yeah. the cloud yeah. is a good way to go. But, but, but I mean, no it's, it's almost the it's, it's, it's the almost that you process. can have your you can have your desktop version of Word linked to OneDrive. So it's it's not even yeah. that you have to be technically minded. It might yeah. take a little few minutes to set it up and make sure that you're in. Um, but really, if, if you have a look at the video, I think we have it down to a minute and a half and it can make a world of difference. And it means you can access it from any other device. And if your laptop breaks or anything like that, or if you forget it or whatever. So um, that's a great way to do it. And you can see when you made different changes and, you know, that's it's, it's uh, but I know it's kind of, it's whatever works for you. I think the big thing with this is it's about what works for you. You could do it completely yeah. differently to somebody yeah. else, but that doesn't mean yeah. it's the wrong way to do it. No. And it might be. Um, you know, especially I suppose we what we're talking about here is probably when you're getting really more into the very in-depth writing stage, whereas I suppose we, uh, especially when you're first, second th year or even coming up to third year and you might have multiple assignments on the go, folders mightn't be the way that works for you. It might be that you mind map everything. It might be that yeah. like we have again, there's a couple of other um, applications like OneNote and Evernote are ones that are nearly more like a scrapbook. And if you're doing something that's more project work as opposed to a big written piece, you can put uh, you can put PDFs and PowerPoints in there. You can put audio files um, you can annotate on them. That's a big thing as well. If, you, if it's just about your slides for Blackboard, there's apps now where you can annotate right on the slide, but just but still keep all that stuff together. But it's about doing that from the outset so that you're building yeah. it as you go. And then when you're getting into the much more in-depth stuff, we can kind of it'll get to the, the points that we're kind of saying.